What is going on everybody, Dan Tripter here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number 16 and today we're going to talk about data types. Yay. Okay. In JavaScript, we work with different data types all the time, such as booleans, floats, strings, so on. It makes sense to use different data types for different situations, right? But uh, when we have a music and audio framework like Tone.js, there are a bunch of new situations that kind of arise. So for example, some musicians might prefer to enter the frequency of a synth, not using floats for frequency, but rather note names like A flat three or G sharp six, for example, the six referring to the octave, G sharp referring to the note name. Tone.js accounts for these different data types and you can see them right here. So synthesizers, most of them accept a frequency like our membrane synth and frequencies can be represented in multiple ways. For example, a frequency may simply be a number. If we give it a 1000, it will resonate at the frequency 1000. And we can test that in our little sketch that we had from last time. I could put a 1000 where it, the membrane synth accepts a frequency. And then if I hit run, Woo. <laughs> Rip headphone users uh, is, is what happens, okay? All right, I think I fixed my levels. So where was I? We can also give it a string and that takes on the following format. Usually a note name, which is a letter usually between A and G and then followed by the octave number. So before we had it as a C1, if you go to C2, that's up one octave, so it actually doubles the frequency. C3 is double the frequency of C2, okay? And C, so like we could, here, let's try it as a G3. So you can kind of hear it as a tone now that it's a little higher. Now in between the G and the three, we can add a sharp sign or AKA hashtag, right? And then it should be, yeah, one half step higher than it was before. Uh, just to hear the G3 again, it sounds like this, right? If we wanted to flatten the note, so lower it by a half step, we can add a B in the middle and listen to that. So that's a G flat, which is the same as say an F sharp three, right? So another common data type is the type time. And as you can see, there are two instances in which we use this data type. One right here as the bass synth duration, and then up here as our loop beat time interval. So time can be represented in a bunch of different ways and you could read about it down here, uh, but I'm just gonna talk about two of them. So we can uh, represent it as a number, which will be interpreted as seconds. Now the caveat, in this case being that you need to use the default beats per minute so that it works. So I'll comment that out uh, and we'll listen to that. So that's uh, a note once per second. You can also enter a string notation that will have the following format. So four or whatever number, and that'll be the beats per measure followed by the letter N. Okay, so if we give it a four and we should hear four notes per measure. Okay, now we don't really know what a measure sounds like until we try one N or you can also type in one M. So let's put an M there just to prove my point. So this is once per measure. So you're hearing the duration of the measure. Now I want you to remember this duration and I'm going to uh, try to put in eight notes per measure. And you can also do odd numbers like fives or sevens. So that's five notes per measure. So I'm on the membrane synth reference page and I just wanna show that the trigger attack release that we're using on it actually takes four potential arguments. And that fourth one is velocity. And you'll notice that velocity has the type normal range. Well, if we click on that and we look at that, it'll show that uh, normal ranges 
or normal range are values within the range zero and one. A very common way to represent audio values, but you know, if you didn't know better, you might have assumed that you could enter a MIDI value there, so you just have to be aware of these types and sometimes look them up. So we can play with those values. We'll give it a really quiet value and we'll hear that it is much quieter than if we put a one. Yep. Let's talk about one more data type before we move on because this one is kind of interesting to me. So if I console.log tone.transport.position, it will provide us with a data type that can be described as numbers separated by a colon sign. So let's let's look at that. And I'll bring console up just a little bit more. Yeah. So this is the bars beats sixteenths data type. I typically don't personally use this data type so much, but if you wanted to use it to schedule rhythms, you absolutely could do that by parsing the data type using the split function. So let me show how to do that. We can go ahead and right here, let current beat equal split, okay, tone.transport.position, and we're gonna split it according to the colon sign there. And then down here in a console.log, if I just pass in current beat and look at that, you'll see we have arrays of, of numbers, although they're technically strings. Then what we could do, hold on one second. I need to make sure that our beats per measure matches our meter, which is by default 4.4, and now this is gonna work. But then what we could do is call current beat at index one, which is going to be the beat of the measure, and we'll have a condition like if current beat at index one equals zero, then we can trigger our base synth, which means that even though we're calling our callback, four times per measure, we're only gonna hear it in the first beat. So let's run that. Very good. For an exercise like this, I just wanna do something a little bit simpler. I'm just gonna decide on the smallest time unit that I might want to use in a loop. Say something like 16th note or 32nd note. Then I can make my own incrementer and call if statements on it. So let's get something up and running. First, let's set our loop interval to a 16th note. So it fires much more often. And then we'll go to the top. We'll declare a counter and we'll go in our setup function and set counter equal to zero. So it initializes at zero. And at the end of our song, so at the very bottom here, We'll add some space. I'm, I'm gonna move our console if I can grab it. There we go. And we're just gonna go ahead and set counter equal to a counter plus one mod 16. So the idea of this is once the counter reaches 15, rather than going on to 16 and other higher numbers, it will revert back to zero and increment from there. All right, now let's just add another synth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to metal synth because I want a cymbal sound, okay? And I wanna check trigger attack release because I know this one is different. Yeah, it only takes three arguments, duration, time, and velocity. All right, with that knowledge, we could go back to our P5 editor and declare cymbal synth and then do the same thing here, except we'll call it symbol synth and metal synth. And then uh, we're gonna have to, we don't wanna press play because right now everything is wrong. We need to get rid of that. We need to get rid of that and that. And symbol synth dot trigger attack, release, and then duration, we'll give it a 16th note, then time, then I do know that 
the symbol synth is kind of loud, so we'll do 0.3 or something like that. Get rid of that. And then if counter mod, I don't know, 4 equals 0, that's when we'll trigger these two synths. So let's do that. Hit run. If we want the synth to happen twice as often, what we could do is say, if counter mod two, right, equals zero, then do this. And let's bring our 140 BPM back. Yeah, that has like a kind of an 808 vibe. Very nice, very nice. Let's bring our bass back to the base zone. Yeah, that, that's the base zone, okay. And I wanna shorten the length of the symbol and we could do it a little bit here, but to make significant alterations to the duration, I've noticed that you kinda need to adjust the actual envelope of the synth. So in the API, you can see that you can initialize parameters of the synth by setting the key value pairs of a JSON. So this, this little object that's uh, represented by these curly braces, that is a JSON. I'm gonna copy and paste the defaults and then go into my symbol synth, which is right here. Open that up, paste them in right here, hit shift tab to beautify it, and before I hit run, I need to make sure that I, these are all strings. So I need to put quotes around every single one of these and then we should be good. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Oops, right there. Oh my gosh. Boom, boom, and boom, boom. Uh, shouldn't have changed anything. Okay, very good. It did not change anything. But now we can play with these values. So let's try 250 frequency. So it's a little higher. We can have a shorter decay. So let's see uh, something like 0 0.01. Ooh, yeah, that's awesome. Maybe it's a little too short. Let's try 0 0.1. Oh, it kind of changes. There we go. 0 0.1 on the release. Ooh, I love that. Okay, and then the harmonicity, we can set to, I don't know, three. Oh man, this is amazing. It's just fun playing with these 16. I don't really even know what half of these numbers are. Uh, resonance of, I don't know, 8,000? Octaves? I don't know, <laughs> 0 0.5? Whatever it is, it sounds amazing, okay. So I will say one thing real quick before we move on because this is important. Be careful when you're setting your ADSR. Make sure that the value of like, for example, the attack is not larger than the eventual duration of the note, like down here. I have crashed Chrome many times making that mistake. All right, finally, let's do something cool with the beat. I'm going to change this so that I'm actually excluding uh, this, which will be, I guess, I'm excluding the second 16th note of every four 16th notes here. Let's hear that. Amazing. <laughs> Just a couple more things. I wanna make the effect of an open and close hi-hat, and I wanna do that by changing the envelope decay over time. So if we go up here and look at our JSON, we can call symbol synth dot envelope dot decay, and then set that equal to something. So I'm gonna go right here and say, uh, symbol synth dot, what was it? Envelope dot decay equals We'll try a larger value for now. Oh yeah, so it's much larger, but what we'll do is maybe do another set of if statements. In fact, what we'll do is inside this, we'll set, well, we'll say if counter equals three, 
or counter equals 12. Let's try that. I think I think I know where those 16th notes lie. And we don't want to wrap it here. We want to have this outside of that statement. Else, boom. And then symbol, whoops, keep that there. But revert it back to 0 or to 0 0.1 there. And in both cases, trigger the synth. That didn't do exactly what I thought. Let me just shorten this significantly. Oh yeah. Now you can hear it. This was supposed to be a tutorial about data types. <laughs> and I'm over here making beats again. So if that bothers you, I'm sorry. I think this will be kind of one of the last times that I'm doing sort of percussive beat based stuff, but sequencing is a very important thing and I in web audio and I want to make sure that that is clear both in P5.js and now in Tone.js. So now that we've got that infrastructure and we understand that, we'll start talking about other things a little more. I hope you enjoy that. Next, I think we're going to add some other kind of synths, and rather than it being a beat about beats, it'll be about tones. <laughs>